In today's machine learning video, we're going to be covering how you can implement a logistic regression within Python with the help of sklearn. Now, if you're not too familiar with what a logistic regression is, let's back up towards what a linear regression is, something that you might be familiar with algebra. Your normal equation y equals mx plus b with a slope going either in the positive direction or a negative direction. All right, well, a logistic regression still deals with the independent or a dependent variable, but instead of that slope, you're gonna see a sigmoid, which looks like an S. And instead of your normal linear regression where you have your outcome that continues to go down or upwards, you're gonna have a binary decision. Think of like a zero or one. Now, some examples of this would be like if someone's gonna buy a product, you're gonna have some factors that deal with that. And then the final outcome, yes, someone buys a product or no, someone does not buy a product. Another example could be like if someone has a disease, right, uh, throughout their medical history. So either someone does have a disease, yes, one, or no, so a binary output. Now the equation of a logistic regression is somewhat similar to the linear, but it is completely different. So essentially what we are taking a look at is y equals one divided by one plus e raised to the negative mx plus b. So you still have the mx plus b element, but a completely different equation. So with that in mind, I'm gonna jump on my computer right now and we're gonna start coding within Jupyter Notebook. So I loaded up my Kaggle notebook over here. Let's start coding. The first thing I'm gonna do is import pandas as PD. And every time I build out a new line, I'm just doing shift enter so it runs the cell above and then drops me down below. Our first thing I'm gonna do is import some data. So I made some mock data over here based off of ultra marathon runners and I'll explain it once we go into this data frame. Uh, but first I'm gonna import this. Uh, what I'm going to also say is I'm going to put this code down below in the description, this right over here, so you can copy it. You don't have to type it out or grab your own data. Okay, so then what I do is just create a data frame, data equals D, which I defined over here, and that's going to be DF, which is very familiar. You've done pandas quite a lot. Okay, so let me explain how this works. This is the results from a 50-mile ultra marathon. And over here is like the average amount of miles per week each of the different participants in the marathon did. Now, over here on the right, we have either a yes or no. Like, for example, this guy over here or girl, we don't know, uh, trained 67 miles per week on average, completed the race. This person trained 88 miles a week on average, did not complete the race. 37 miles per week, no. So before we run our logistic regression, I would like to plot a few things um, but also at the same time, we need to change this over here, the completed to 50 mile ultra. So we have to change this to zero or one. And I've already had two videos on the channel, uh, both one hot encoder and also ordinal encoder, kind of showing you guys how you could do that. So make sure to watch those if you have not. Uh, in this instance, I'm gonna be using an ordinal encoder. So I'll show you how to do that. So the first thing I'm gonna do is from sklearn.preprocessing. And I completely butchered the spelling right there. Preprocessing import ordinal encoder. Great, shift enter. And first thing I'm gonna do is define our two categories. So in here, I know that there's only gonna be no or yes. So I wanna have them in a order. And that's the reason why I'm using ordinal encoder over one hot encoder. Um, one hot encoder essentially is categorical data that there's no hierarchy. Here there is, right? No would be a zero. They did not complete it. One is completing it, so that's why we're doing that. Um, but we do have to define it, so we're gonna say finished underscore race equals, and then we'll put over here no and yes. So when I run ordinal encoder, all the no's will turn into zeros, all the yeses will turn into one. Okay, so shift and enter. And if we don't do this early on, it's gonna be an alphabetical order. So I just prefer to call this out, although technically, even if it was an alphabetical order, right, no is zero, Yes is one, but for proper coding, I'd rather just do that. Okay, so now we can call our ordinal encoder. So I'm just gonna put ENC equals, I'm gonna copy this ordinal encoder over here, and then I'm gonna put categories equal, and inside over here, the brackets, I'm gonna put finished race, right? This is the categories that we defined a little bit earlier. Now, normally also with categories, if you're dealing with large data set, um, you wanna usually do dot .unique to make sure that there's other stuff, but I already, prep this data so that there's only no's or yeses. Okay, so we have finished race over here, and now we define ordinal encoder, we have ENC, great. So now we can overwrite this column over here, the completed 50 mile ultra, 
Uh, so all we're going to do is kind of like how we define a new column uh, within a data frame, right? So I'm just going to say completed 50 mile ultra. I'm just going to copy that. So I don't make any spelling mistakes. We're going to say that's equal to enc dot fit. And we're going to do fit transform. You should be pretty familiar with that. If not, no worries. And then inside over here, we're going to say df. We're going to put two brackets this time. And then we're going to copy this. Well, I guess we can just replace the inside brackets with this. Right, completed 50 mile ultra. And now this should have changed all these to zeros or ones. And the way to check that, again, you can just run df. Super easy, right? And take a look. So completed 50 mile ultra, the ones at the beginning that we talked about said no, right? All zeros, the ones at the very end that did complete ones. And it looks good over here. So, so now we can start charting this data. Uh, so the first thing I'm gonna do is use matplotlib. So I'm gonna also build out a few new cells over here. So import, well, actually it's from matplotlib import pyplot as PLT. And you'll see the whole time as PLT over here. And what I'm gonna do is a scatter plot first. So we're gonna do plt.scatter. And what I'm gonna do over here is have our X and Y. So our X is gonna be miles per week, right? So you can just do df.miles per week. And then our Y is gonna be the complete the ultra, right? So again, just copy that. We can just put this over here. And you can see uh, right over here, a lot over in the zero, especially like the 20 to 40 miles per week. And then over here, once you start getting to like 60 miles, I would even say 50 miles per week, a lot more people finish the race. And I mean, that'd be normal. You have to train quite a lot for an ultra marathon. And I mean, if you're at 20 miles per week and you're completing a 50 mile mar ultra marathon, props to you on that. Although you're still probably walking it, but still it's a very tough race, right? And you can kind of see the S too, right? So up over here and over there. So yeah, about 50 miles per week is that, and you do have people over here that did not finish. And that could be for a lot of reasons, right? So not everyone's gonna have a good race and sometimes someone will drop out. There could be injuries associated with it. A lot of different things that we don't know about. Um, and that's the reason why people don't finish and why a model isn't always gonna be 100% correct. Okay, another thing that we should look at is Seaborn. Uh, they have a count plot, which I really like. So we can just do import Seaborn as SNS and just shout out to Seaborn because I do have a full course on the channel if you guys wanna watch it to learn how to use Seaborn. I think it's pretty powerful. And you can build some plots really, really fast. I still need to also do a one on matplotlib in the future, but I'm right now I'm gonna be focusing on machine learning videos for a while. Okay, so SNS.countplot, we're gonna put over here X equals and we're again, we're just gonna copy this completed 50 mile ultra, right? So just copy that, throw that down below over here. And then we're gonna say our data equals DF. And then you can see, right, did not complete. So we have about a third of the people, 30% over here, or maybe 33 that did not finish. And then about 67 that did. I mean, we can get those exact numbers, but I'm just estimating right now. Uh, so more people completed this race than it did not based off of the training from above. Okay, now I think we can start prepping to run our model. We've already gone over here. We've changed our categorical data, right? No's and yeses to zeros and ones. We took a look at both of these. It looks like it would be something perfect for a logistic regression, right? We have a bunch over here, a bunch over here. We have our typical S curve. And then we also see over here zeros and ones. Let's start running this. So first thing we're gonna do is break up our data to X and also Y. So our X, right, is gonna be the miles per week. Our Y is gonna be essentially if someone completed that ultra marathon or not. So the easiest way that I do this is just do X equals df.iloc. And then we're just gonna put a colon and then comma and zero to one. And then our Y is just gonna be Y equals, and I'm literally just gonna copy this over here and remove the zero and just keep it as one and also that colon. And now we have our X and Y defined. This is specifically what we need. Uh, next thing we need to do is import train test split. So before you wanna run your model, you wanna split up your data into training data and also testing data. You don't wanna train your model on all the data at once. That way we can see if our model is accurate or not. Again, I have a full video on that too, if you wanna check that out. So X train, X 
test and don't be intimidated by this. I promise you it's actually pretty easy once you do it a few times. Y train and Y test. Well, first, actually, before I even do that, I need to import this because I didn't even import it. So from sklearn.model selection, import train test split all lowercase on this one. Okay, and now we can actually do our thing. So x train x test y train y test equals we'll just copy this train test split over here and then capital x lowercase y our training size i'm just going to keep this at 0 0.8 i just do that all the time right i'm just used to it so equals 0 0.8 and then we can set up a random state so essentially what this is going to do is randomize your data and then put it in your training and testing sets so if you set a random state you can replicate the exact stuff that I have. If I don't, right, it's going to randomize it and you don't know which random state it's in. Again, I talk about that in that train test split video. Um, but I'm going to say random state equals 11. Why not, right? Okay. So now we have that over here. And just to show you, like, this has been split up properly, we can do over here, like, x train dot shape, right? We have 80 over here. We do x test dot shape, we should have 20. Right, we have 21, okay, whatever, right? Either way, we have all this built out over here and we are ready to go for our logistic regression. I am gonna add a lot more cells over here and let's start doing that. So the first thing we're gonna have to do is import this. So just do from sklearn.linear model import logistic regression like that, okay? And then we can say something like model equals, and then I'm just gonna put logistic regression, call that over here. And now we have to fit our data. So we'll do model.fit. And since we split up our data over here, right, we're not gonna do X and Y, we're gonna do X train and then Y train. So X train, then we have Y train. Now we have fit our model and you can see logistic regression is down below over here. Okay, great. Let's keep going forward with this side of things. Then you do Y prediction, right? Y pred, I do that all the time, equals model dot predict. And then you're gonna throw your X test in here. Um, so we're testing this test data set, right? To figure out Y prediction over here. Okay. Now that has been run. And then we can see a few things. So first thing we wanna do is our model dot score see how well our score is. And then over here, you're gonna put X test, and then you're gonna do Y test. And we have 0 0.9, which is pretty good overall. Uh, next thing we're gonna do is take a look at our confusion matrix and also our classification report. Okay, and both of these are gonna be from sklearn metrics. So I'm just gonna say from sklearn.metrics. I spelled it right, yep. Import confusion underscore matrix. We're going to do this one first. No T over there. Make sure you spell it correctly. I always make coding mistakes like that. And then what I recommend if you just do this, just throw it in your print is you have to do this anyways. Just throw in confusion matrix over here. And we're going to do Y test and then Y predictions. Okay. And then we have five and 14 and then one on each of those. So on this one, we have true positive, right? Predicted correctly on that side of things. True negative, right? And then over here, we have false positive and then also false negative. Um, but if we wanna even run it, some of the data off of that, it's better just to run a classification report rather than using a calculator or doing it by hand. So again, from sklearn metrics import, and I'm gonna remove confusion matrix. And yes, I know I could just call them both over here, but I prefer just splitting it up just to teach you guys that. So classification, reports great and then same exact thing right this time we're going to say classification report so just copy that throw that where it says confusion matrix and we have our classification report so we have precision recall f1 score now how this specifically works so for precision you look at true positive you divide that by true positive over false positive 
right? So we're taking a look at this side of things, right? 0 0.83. Now, if you look at recall, we're going to take a look at true positive over true positive plus false negative, right? This one, the vertical side of things, right? 0 0.83 once again. Now, F1 score, you take two times your recall times precision divided by precision and recall. And that's how you get this over here. And then let's take a look at our weighted average 0 0.9, which I do like. So just one more time, just to run it through this so you guys understand how this works. So the first thing I did is import my data over here, right? And since we have categorical data, we have to make sure that this is coded into zeros and ones so we can run our specific model. I used an ordinal encoder because with this categorical data, there is a ranking behind it, right? No means you failed the race. Yes means you completed it. So I changed that and that's where we have this in this data frame. Up next, I did two different plots. We have a scatter plot and then we also have a count plot just to show you how this data works, right? You can really see the logistic regression on both right over here and on this side of things too, right? Zeros and ones. Then I separated the data into X and Y. X is gonna be the miles per week. Y is the results from that race. I did a train test split. So that way we accurately split up our data and we can train our model and then test how accurate it is, right? And then we did 80-20 essentially with that. Then I ran my logistic regression. I fitted it with the training data that I did predictions best off of the X test data. I ran a few different metrics such as a confusion matrix and also a classification report. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to subscribe to the channel as these videos do take a bit of effort to make. By the way, I mentioned a little bit earlier in the video about ordinal encoding. Well, you should go watch this video right over here. I think it's really helpful, especially when you run a lot more machine learning models.